Hello everyone, welcome back. Another episode of Drive Along here. Alright, alright, I'm headed to get my inspection done. Texas has a inspection, safety inspection that you need to pass. Doesn't take too much actually. Doesn't take much at all, to be honest. It takes very little. Um, let me see what I don't know all of it, but I know that the the tail lights and the headlights they need to be intact. The lights need to be working, and the housing cannot be cracked or broken. Um, the brakes have to work, obviously. Uh, so wipers have to be. Um, in good condition as well. I should, I should probably, uh, well, no, I think the wipers are good on this. So wipers have to be in good condition. Uh, simple, like, maintenance, lame little maintenance stuff, you know. Simple little maintenance stuff. So that's what I gotta do to get my registration, my registration is due. So that's where I'm headed. And so that's where I'm going. This is the drive along for today, everybody. Hopefully you all enjoy the drive alongs. I have my red power bike, the red mini, the folded, all folded up in the back. I didn't bring a battery. I don't think I'm gonna ride the bike just because uh, it only takes about half an hour, 20 minutes to half an hour. Depends how busy they are. I'm going in the morning. It should be open by now. And so uh, I'm leaving in the morning and to get it. I'm just doing a lot of errands uh, since I have to go out with the car. And so just also doing a drive along as well. So I'm using the Insta360 One for the drive along, not the Insta360 One X, mainly because the audio it works a lot better. It's just easier for me, and plus the uh, the way it captures everything, it, it gives me more room to capture. So that's that's kind of why I like it. And I'm using the backpack as a pseudo chest mount. So I'm doing that. And I'm going with this kind of setup here. It's just a lot easier for me. So what am I going to talk about today in this drive along? Well, Halloween passing and came, or Halloween came and passed. I only had two trick-or-treaters. It was cold that day. It was in the lower 40s, which was, which is cold for people in Houston, because literally a few days before that it was in the 80s. So with the temperature just drops by 40 degrees from, you know few days from 80 degrees to 40 degrees it, it gets uh, people don't like trick-or-treating all that much I guess uh, what's up with this guy this guy I'm gonna I'm gonna go through the shortcut or yeah I'm gonna go through the shortcut here anyway someone's got an issue or uh, maybe they're doing some maintenance work not sure what's going on they changed this area so you can't cross into the intersection anymore or it's you can but it only goes a certain way we're in the rich neighborhood these are multi at least on this side there's multi-million dollar homes or at least the homes next to the water multi-million dollar homes I guess I, I guess what I pay millions of dollars for these homes, I probably wouldn't. I think I mentioned it before, the, the reason why they, you know, my, my daughter asked me, how do, how do 
how do people afford these homes and who lives in them? Like, why do they buy these big homes? And, you know, I was telling her, like, there's several ways people end up with homes like this. Either they are high income producers. So in other words, they, they produce a high income in order to afford these homes, right? Or the other way would be that uh, they've simply been, um, I've got the word for it, but uh, they pretty much have been, in, I would say, uh, investing the homes or they've been buying and selling homes throughout their life and the value of their homes have gone up to the point you know, every time you buy and sell a house, buy and sell a house, especially investment homes, what happens is that, you know, to off, to put off paying uh, the taxes, you have to buy an equal amount or larger home or several homes e equal to or greater to the value of the home that you sold. And every time, you know, as time goes on, these property values go up. Eventually, you end up with just a lot of money, right? A lot of money in which you pay for for property tax or I mean not property tax but paying taxes right and instead of paying taxes what you want to do is you want to offset that by purchasing other property and real estate property that is and eventually if, if I was doing it what I would do is eventually I would if I was trying to cash out what I would do eventually is just uh, you know, when you when you bite the bullet, you eventually have to pay the, the taxes eventually on the, on the value of, of your investment property. But eventually what you want to do is you want to uh, eventually live in it, right? Take all that and eventually purchase a property in which you can live. And then if an alarm becomes an investment property, it becomes a personal property. And then the the amount of taxes you owe on it versus if you just sold it straight out versus the original investment over your original purchase property, which it takes years, you know, it could take years, um, your whole life actually, but but uh, you basically end up paying less in taxes compared to um, if you just bought a piece of property, sat on it for 40 years, and then and then sold it. That's investment property, not your personal property. So uh, that's another way people they, people build equity into these homes. And eventually, all they're doing is transferring the value from one home to another home. And the homes are just getting more valuable and more valuable, bigger and bigger. And that's how. That's a way. That's the other way. So either you already have the money and already produce the income to pay for that home. Or you've built up equity over the years and just transferring the value from one home to another home to another home. Geez, they are really uh, doing some maintenance work today. And that's how people live in these homes. That's how these people get these large homes. And, you know, I'm trying to educate. I, I don't know how much I want to educate my my children. I eventually do want to educate them on money, but I want them to focus on education right now. And that's kind of where I would like them to focus on education or get education or, or get involved in learning about stuff that they're interested in. That's what I really want them to do right now. Um, the money part, it's really not important right now, especially at their young age. The ones in high school, the ones in elementary, they're not going to you know, be filing taxes anytime soon. <laughs> so uh, there's no need for them to explain how money is created out of, you know, thin air, right? How money and value and wealth is created. Um, you know, um, so, but I will talk about it a little bit, I guess. Uh, you know, you, you could, you create uh, value and, and wealth through, through leverage. Either you leverage your money or you leverage other people's money. Uh, you leverage time. Either you leverage your time or other people's time. Uh, so it's it's all about leverage. Uh, so what I mean by leverage is you put in like, I don't know, 10 minutes of time. But you get an output of like, 
ideally as much as possible, a hundred, a million times more than that. So you put in 10 minutes and you're getting a, a million minutes of, of time. You're leveraging other people's time or you're leveraging your time. Or, or you're trying to, well, that's not really descriptive. I, I guess it's possible, but it's not, you know, you have to be practical. Here's, here's a place that I take my car for uh, the inspection. They, it's, it's a flat fee. I don't trust auto parts or auto places. So, um, you know, you have to be practical. There's, there's, you're trying to be most efficient with your time and money. And, um, you know, in, and there's only so much you can leverage. You can't leverage out of thin air technically. Um, technically, but although there's some organizations out there that, that leverage, <laughs> leverage to infinity, but, uh, anyways, I gotta probably park out here because it looks like they're busy this morning. They're busy this morning. I've gone through this rigmarole. So I usually park my car, leave the keys here, and then, um, just go for a walk. Uh, my windshield wipers, I'll check my windshield wipers. I think they're okay. So anyways, that's it for the drive along and enjoy the walk along coming here soon. Uh, I'll probably incorporate it into the, uh, the drive along. Bye.